That is not what I expected from that job. Hi, this is Mickey Geek and I'm Dan. Welcome back to the workshop. The CNC is finished. Uh, I figured it was time to revisit one of my most viewed videos on this channel, which was way back when I built the original Ox CNC. I did a test to see whether or not I could machine 18 mil ply in a single pass. Uh, that had its problems. I'm sure you can go see that video. I figured it's time to try it out with the rebuild. So let's uh, look at the setup. Eighteen mil ply. I just have a backstop here, some clamps, something to stop it moving. I think the first time I did this, I actually screwed the ply down, but um, simple, simple enough setup. I'm just going to bring the cutter in about here, and I'm just going to push it manual. Now that's what I did originally. I just jogged the machine using manual controls, and there are lots of reasons why that's a terrible test, uh, as people pointed out in the comments. So I will also do a proper program and maybe look at a few different options. Obviously milling full contact slot is a great deal more aggressive than milling along an end. Um, but anyway, we'll fire it up, we'll do that, let's do it. Okay, so uh, you can't see terribly well from that angle, but I've got the same uh, ripping cut a bit in here uh sorry that the vice is in the way a little bit um as i had for that original video i've set it down on the deck i'm just gonna do a probably a like a five centimeter jog that way five centimeters this way five centimeters this way uh that could be problematic because it will if it's successful it'll cut this block out but uh hey that's the test as was done originally. So I need to set the spindle going. Um, so spin up the speedle. We're coming up to 14,000 RPM. Moment of truth. Let's do it. Well, that went quite a lot better. Let's, um... That went quite a lot better than the first time I tried this. Uh, let me just lift the Z out of the way. <laughs> ah, wow, well, that was... So, that is my block cut at pace, it's got a little bit of a hang. Oh, this looks a bit bright. Uh, it obviously broke away uh, on that final corner, but that went through like butter. <laughs> no problem. Uh, da, da, da. Let's clean up and take a deeper look at that. I brought you in as tight as I can with the camera. This is the result. It's a little bit... Um, flaky on the sides uh, which is to be expected this is a rip cut cutter so it's not exactly a finishing thing but it just tore through that at full feed speed which I have at about two and a half thousand millimeters a minute I think uh, absolutely no problem whatsoever those things look pretty straight to me like I might need to sand off some of the fur to see whether or not there was any deviation in this corner. It feels like there might have been. Um, same with this corner. Possibly there's a little bit of lateral flex that when it's stationary it kind of beds in, but when it's driving it's got a little bit of a pull to it. But again, like this is the, the block we cut out. Uh, let me see if I can get a square on that. 
the engine is square on this corner. I mean, I can't say fairer than that. That is a dead straight, dead square cut. I say this corner broke away because I didn't do anything like tabs or anything, so as it burst out this side, it pushed it out. But for all the other corners, that is bang on. Upgrades work. Okay, so uh, test as was, way more successful with this setup. Obviously, this is a substantially upgraded machine at this point. We've got these uh, 12 mil linear rails times two. We're using 16 mil ball screws on the X and the Y uh, and indeed on the Z axis. So everything has a lot more power to give. Uh, whilst the Z and the X motors are still the same that I had on the Ox machine, the Y axis motors I have upgraded. They're on their own drivers now with their own power supply. So they're definitely throwing more power at this than the previous machine. Um, so I was expecting this to go better. That went great. Uh, so I think the next thing to do would be to whip up a quick test actual G-code program to do something a little bit more interesting also at full depth. Um, maybe just a circle or a basic cog or something. So I'm just gonna go and we'll whip that up and then we'll join me back here and we'll try that. All right, uh, so just a quick job upstairs on the CAD. I now have two jobs. One is gonna cut just a, like a 60 mil circle. It's gonna ramp down to full depth. So it won't just go plunge straight because that doesn't work very well with end mills. So it's just gonna ramp down in one smooth arc to cut out a circle <coughs> and leave some tabs. And the other job is going to create like a, just a cog kind of pattern on the outside of that. That hopefully will clear the edge of the material for the lead in and then just pull in from the side at full depth and cut around again, leaving some tabs. That's the theory, a bit more complicated, um, but let's give it a go. So, That is not what I expected from that job. Okay, so I guess in science, any result is a result. Uh, <laughs> so the first job didn't do what I expected to do. The, the ramp that I was sure I programmed in, maybe I didn't check out the file after I'd done that. It was supposed to do a circular ramp. It didn't do that. <laughs> it just drove into place and just blitzed around. Now, to be fair, it blitzed around and it did exactly what it needed to. It cut the circle and it looks like a pretty good circle. So I thought, no, uh, no matter, we'll go on to the cog. And for the cog, it went to the correct lead-in position, but then just bailed out, which tells me that my post-processor and duet are not necessarily lined up on what the commands are. So I'm gonna go and check what's in the file, make sure that duet supports everything, and maybe tweak some things, and then we'll come back and see if I can get that working. Okay, actually, forget that. I figured out exactly what I did wrong. When I was doing the manual test to cut out the square, I manually drove myself down to the bottom of the cut to uh, set things up. In CAD, I set my stock start point at the top edge of the stock. So basically I had my Z depth set 18 mil deeper than it was supposed to be. And my machine was like, well, you've just asked me to go even further 18 mil deep. 
which I can't do because that's out of the machine limits. So it bailed. That's why it went wrong. That's fine, very easy. I've just reset Z to the top of the stock. That also makes a bit more sense as to potentially what went wrong with the circle. It's interesting that it sort of got as far as it did before bailing out. I guess it bails at the moment the instruction is to go beneath and because it was a ramp, it was essentially, it thought it was ramping down <laughs> and then suddenly an instruction said, go beneath the lowest point you can go and it said no. Um, whereas with the cog, it went to the leading position and the first job was go straight down to that depth and it was like no so that makes perfect sense z is reset let's do this thing for real this time That was pretty exciting. <laughs> that worked great. Once I, uh, you know, user error had uh, run its course, let's let's undo these and um, we'll take we'll take a proper look. So yeah, you can see clearly in the center point where it was in the middle of a ramp. Uh, and it got all the way down to a point which had cut through, but that's not the tabs holding it in that's supposed to be. That's essentially the end of a ramp that it didn't think it could do, um, or probably the beginning of the ramp, and it hadn't. At this point, it knew it was too low. Um, there's a couple of places where I haven't actually done a full bed leveling, so this isn't cut all the way through, but the tabs are pretty good. Uh, yeah, let's pop it out and... Uh, I'll we'll take a proper look. So that's it all out. Obviously some rough toughness and raggediness as expected. That was a rough end cutter, but I think it's pretty precise. So I'm going to just clean some of this up with some sandpaper and then I'm going to measure this hole and uh, yeah, have a bit of a check. All right, so uh, let me just turn this off. Oh, a little bit quieter. Um, bit of cleanup, and I've just been running the calipers around to try and get a sense of the precision of this whole thing. Uh, the internal circle is pretty good, but it is a little squished one way rather than the other, which is fairly typical, I think. Um, but what did I measure? So basically... At its widest point, it was about 58.7978-ish millimeters. And at its lowest point, it was 58.46. So 0.3-ish of a mil difference, which, uh, I mean, depending on what you're doing, obviously that can be horrific and terrible or perfectly reasonable. Considering this was a single pass, super fast, full depth 18 mil cut, I will take 0.3 of a mil squished on my circle. Um, I had a measure on the outside diameters between those two uh, kind of extremes for the internal circle, 
and it was off by oh well, let's see 0 0.3 mil so that's again the difference i guess between the different types of cuts and what was going on the forces involved obviously if i was doing this f sort of properly i would probably run the roughing cutter full pace with stock left and then come in with a much less insanely aggressive uh finishing pass um which would probably take out some of that error just by virtue of not super loading things um but in terms of the test that was it 18 mil ply full send uh this machine far more capable than the original it came from uh, i hope that was somewhat enjoyable or interesting to some people um thanks for watching see you next time